What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Last Raps Baseball video production. Today, we're going to take a look at my top five 2019 under the radar rookies. We'll kick it off with number five on my list. And number five is Will Smith of the Los Angeles Dodgers. And uh, Will was the 24-year-old uh, backstop for the Dodgers last year. He was a first-round pick, 32nd overall, uh, out of the University of Louisville in the 2016 Major League Draft. Last year, he belt hit, uh, 253, belted 15 homers in uh, only 170 plate appearances. You can see here's the back of his card from 2019. And I said Will needed less than three years to dash his way from the University of Louisville to Los Angeles. Uh, he's, uh, began the 2019 season in spring training, uh, behind Austin Barnes and Russell Martin. And, uh, when they first called him up, he got about six games under his belt in the big leagues and, uh, he had a walk-off home run against the Phillies. And then, uh, got sent back down, came back up for three more games and, uh, again hit a walk-off home run. And so in his first nine games in the bigs, two walk-off home runs. He's an athletic catcher. He's 5'10", 195, and um, pretty solid defensively behind the dish as well. And so uh, Will Smith is my number five under-the-radar rookie. My number four under-the-radar rookie goes to Cleveland Indians center fielder Oscar Mercado. Mercado is a 25-year-old Colombian who was a second-round pick of the Cardinals in 2013. And uh, if you think the Cardinals outfield is a little bit log-jammed, uh, he's added uh, uh, another log-jam into the mix here in, in Cleveland. Uh, he was traded, ironically, uh, for two outfielders, um, two uh, young low-level uh, minor leaguers, Connor Capel and uh, John, I think it was Toros, uh, went the other way. And... Uh, Last year, um, Mercado basically took over the job because there were too many injuries in the health field in Cleveland. Uh, Fran Miel Reyes came in, and he played in right and combined for 37 bombs uh, between San Diego and Cleveland. And Jordan Luplo seems to be the guy who's going to take over and left. But in the offseason this year, the, uh, the Indians have also acquired uh, Delino DeShields, Domingo Santana, uh, Greg Allen, who two years ago had a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice line for a rookie. Uh, he's there, Jake Bowers, and um, everybody's kind of forgotten about the once highly touted prospect, uh, Bradley Zimmer. We don't know what Bradley Zimmer's going to be doing or how he's going to fit into the mix. So why I think Mercado is number four on my list, well, he has a little bit of juice. He had 15 bombs. Um, he stole 15 bags, he, so he's got some uh, hop in his step. Uh, it's his job to lose in center field, and I think that, you know, there's... Um, there's a lot of competition breathing down his neck, and certainly Delino De Shields has come off a couple injury uh, riddled years, and you know Greg Allen, and as I said, Jake Bowers. Uh, he's got three or four guys that are going to be knocking on the door, so he's got to come in and produce, or he's going to be back in the uh, in AAA as quickly as as quickly as he's made his debut into the big leagues. Number three on my list is the grandson of Red Sox great Carl Yastrzemski, and it would be Mike Yastrzemski. And uh, Mike was drafted in the 2013 MLB draft out of Vanderbilt University. And of course, Vandy is uh, more widely known as a pitching factory than it is a positional player factory. Although Austin Martin, who was projected to go in the top five of this year's draft, um, might have something different to say about that. At the, uh, the end of spring training in 2019, the Giants uh, shipped uh, Yastrzemski, or uh, the Orioles shipped Yastrzemski to the Giants for minor leaguer Tyler Herb. And 2019 was a, uh, was a pretty good rookie campaign for Yastrzemski. Solid year, hit 272, 21 homers and 371 at-bats. I think at the big league level, he needs to cut down on his strikeouts a bit. I think he had about 110 strikeouts in uh, those 371 at-bats, and he's got to increase his walks. He only had about 32 walks. He's a decent defender and a strong arm. And So why I think Yastrzemski is, uh, is number three on my list, shows advanced hitting acumen. Heck, the bloodlines. He's uh, 
Yaz's kid or grandson. Um, good approach to plate, uh, at least at the minor league level. Uh, he's short and quick to the ball, although he does lack some bat speed. He runs well and can uh, pretty much take he's take on a, a fourth outfield type uh, type role. In some ways, he's a poor man's Kevin Pillar to me, uh, which would probably give him about four to five years in the big leagues uh, if he's a fourth outfielder and, and does his job. But that's Mike Kostrimski, and he's number three on my list. Number two on my list is San Diego Padre right-hander Chris Paddock. Paddock was an eighth-round uh, selection in the 2015 Major League Draft out of high school by the Miami Marlins. In 2016... Uh, the Marlins sent him packing uh, to the Padres straight up for Fernando Rodney. Uh, to me, that's a steal. What were the Marlins thinking? Uh, well, general manager Mike Berger uh, was quoted as saying, uh, by acquiring Fernando Rodney, it strengthened our strength. We have a very strong bullpen to begin with at the time, and in, in the end, we got a little bit better and better. Well, unfortunately, Fernando Rodney was 2-3 and three with a 5.89 ERA after the trade the rest of the way walking 25 batters in 36 and two-thirds innings. Well, that trade didn't really work out well for the, um, for the, uh, for the Marlins. But, uh, but Paddock is sure looking like uh, he's going to step in and do some damage for the, um, for the Padres. So 2019, he made his big league debut for the Friars. He won nine and lost seven, and he posted an ERA of uh, 333. And the thing about Paddock is, is he's got great control. He walked two batters in nine innings. Uh, and what also was impressive to me is he struck out 153 batters in 140 and two-thirds innings. So he's got some, uh, he's got some jump. So I guess why, why was he number two pick? Well, he's a Tom and John survivor in 2017, and he's just starting to get rolling. Uh, control has always been his strength. He sits about 91 to 94 with the fastball, uh, and he's got swing and miss stuff. There's a lot of late life on his heater. He commands all four uh, quadrants of the zone, and his changeup is um, his changeup is really really good because he sells it with similar arm speed to uh, to, to his fastball. Um, the problem is, is I think uh, once Paddock goes through the league uh, another time or another time and a half here. Um, He's going to have to improve his breaking ball. His breaking ball is a bit of a problem, uh, and a lot of uh, scouts seem to think it's almost like a high school breaking ball. It's in the mid-70s. It's kind of loopy, and uh, he also knows he doesn't throw it very much because he'll get it knocked around the park. But that's Chris Paddock, and he's number two on my list of underrated rookies from 2019. My number one under-the-radar rookie from 2019 is Dakota Hudson of the St. Louis Cardinals. Hudson, a 6'5", 215-pound right-hander, was drafted out of Mississippi State University in the 2016 Major League Draft, 34th overall by the Cards. And um, during the 2018 season, uh, he actually made his Major League debut with the Cardinals, and he appeared in about 20-some-odd uh, um, games out of the bullpen. And uh, he was 4-1 and one with a 2.63 ERA. But the biggest concern that the Cards have with Hudson is his ability to control his pitches as he was walking nearly six batters per nine innings. 2019, Hudson moved to the starting rotation. And uh, as he came to the starting rotation, uh, he was able to, to do a few things. He was 16-7 and seven with a 3.33 ERA or 3.35 ERA. Um, his walks were still an issue as he led the league with 86 free passes and 174 and two-thirds innings, but he was able to cut the walks to nine-inning ratio down to 4.4, and that showed a huge improvement. So why do I think that Dakota Hudson is the number one um, uh, under-the-radar rookie? Well, some of it has to do with his tools. He's got good sync on his fastball. He throws 96, 97 miles an hour. Uh, his secondaries are average, but he does flash uh, a plus side. His slider, his curve, um, look like they could be okay. Um, he has to tighten up the command on his changeup, 
And uh, by the looks of it, when he went to the starting rotation, uh, he shelved his cutter. Uh, he used to throw a cutter out of the pen, but now he's um, just going with fastball, slider, curve, change, mix. And with Jack Flaherty looking at the ace, I think uh, Hudson has a chance to slide in and be a solid number two uh, pitcher for the cards. So that's Dakota Hudson. He's number one on my under-the-radar rookie list from 2019. Carter Kaiboom of the Washington Nationals. Fernando Tatis of the San Diego Padres. Keston Hira, Milwaukee Brewers. And Vladimir Guerrero of the Toronto Blue Jays. All four of these players are definitely not flying under the radar, as all of them had outstanding seasons last year in their opportunities in the big leagues. Thanks again for watching another Last Wraps Baseball video production. If you like what you saw, please hit the subscribe button and be sure to give us a thumbs up. Please join us again tomorrow for another Last Wraps Baseball video. Thanks, everybody.